All right, so as we get this video going, this is a uh, the footage that I was filming. I don't know, some of you guys might have seen it, some of you guys might not, but Roper put up a video asking me questions on what I was doing in the corner um, with hand fighting stuff, and he put it up on Facebook and things like that. And I'm just kind of going through a progression and thinking about ways to teach hand fighting. And this, so we're going to start with just wrist ties. All right, so it's just literally I grab mirror so my left hand on his right hand and then take a circle step to the outside so left hand on his right hand I call it a two oh a two step handoff so one two and then circle then I come back if he grabs my hand you couldn't see it at that angle but Then I, every time I go over there, it's because I'm checking my notes and what I had written down. While Darren stands there awkwardly scratching his head, and then I scratch my head awkwardly. So, so two-step handoff, circle. I'm doing so an inside foot forward circle, which feels super awkward. I don't know if I like it yet. I think it's only an attack step. So like that, like that would be an attack step instead of a circle. So like yeah, like one-two attack step. So I two-step handoff with the wrist, and then one-two attack step. You just go back and forth. And it's a pretty passive drill. The partner doesn't do very much. <laughs> so I split his body in half and then do a one two attack step. So now that's an outside step or a circle step. So I one two hand off back and forth an outside step attack step. And then of course my brain just breaks all the time. I have to go back over there and look. And I've cut this up where you don't see a ton of downtime. It's me doing a lot of stuff. So this is where I do a two-step handoff, he attacks my wrist, and then I do another, see that's a, so I can go two-step handoff or one-step handoff, and all I mean is, that's a two-step because I put two hands on it, that was a one-step, I only put one hand on it, that's all that means. And now I'm just going over, or just reminding myself, like, back when I used to do karate, I have a black belt by the way, back when I used to do karate, the little wrist roll thing I was doing a second ago, I'll rewind it. Let's see. So, right here, when I roll my wrist down toward his thumb, that's something I got from karate and something that Roper's reinforced and the co my coaches have reinforced. You just roll your wrist toward their thumb, break it. And then it's, so he attacks. And now I got a little bit of a hand fight going where I'm con I control, then he controls, and I recontrol. Yeah, there's a little wrist roll I'm talking about, and that's just some goofy trick that I think Roper showed me one time. And it, it looks like it wouldn't work, but it's actually pretty effective, which is very strange. You just guys are just like straight up. It's really weird. Anyway, back to the normal hand fight that I want to do. <laughs> so I do my circle steps, making sure I'm centered on camera like a goober. So, yep, he attacks a one step handoff roll. Yep. Or two step. So that's a two step because I went one, two, both hands on it. That's a one step with an inside step. I think I'm going to start getting the Schwab tie here now. That's what we call a Schwab tie, but it's basically where you take your outside wrist hand and go up to his elbow and pull while you circle step. Bring your head to the, you can bring it to the back of their arm, like you're in their armpit, or head in front. Either is fine. I think I do head in front here in a second. You guys see an outside step circle, then attack step. Uh, I think Joey and Doug are wrestling this day, and I think Doug was squeezing the soul out of Joey, and he made a little bit of noise. Or the other way around, I'm not sure. We'll ask Doug later. So I'm back to my Schwab time, circling. Yeah, see that's head in front. So really with that tie, it's about splitting his body in half, getting my feet on one side, getting my head on one side, controlling one side of his body, learning to move my feet, learning to get head position in different places. So as you can see, we started with both hands on the wrist, and then we start to slowly work up this guy's arm. So it's both hands on the wrist, then one hand comes up to his elbow. We work up a little bit. I don't know what Darren's doing there. Oh. Well, 
ghost all around him. Oh, he's, oh, he's fighting off ghosts. Look, look at him. He just elbow past the ghost. My brain decided to work again, so I come back. So I step and circle with the low wrist tie. And then I started playing around with swinging back and forth on the same wrist. Where I learned to move my feet kind of to both sides. And move this guy to both sides. Step and reach, roll my head under. Step and reach, roll my head under. All this hand fight stuff is predicated on head position, so my head never comes above his. Never comes above his. And really I want it on one side of his body, whether it's on him or not. Cut his body in half with your head and your feet and your hands. That way he's always wrestling at a disadvantage angle like that. Like that, if he wrestles from that position, it's gonna be a bad time for him. So now we're getting into some wrist snap stuff. Whereas I pull, this guy tries to square up and stop getting pulled, so he posts on my shoulder and I snap his hand down. And so this is kind of how you could learn to go back and forth with this stuff. So like I posted, Darren just snapped me down to a swab tie. I grabbed his wrist. He switches to the other side, swab tie. And all these like low middle wrist drills get to be interchangeable. And both guys can do them at the same time. So it can become a really spark feel pretty fast. Whereas right here, he grabs my wrist maybe and then he, he circles and then I go and, and grab his wrist. Maybe he posts, I snap it back down. His post comes, so I slide. I think right here I was wondering if I want to stay at his elbow or just move both hands to one side or slide down to his wrist. If I'm coming from Schwab tighter to wrist now, I think I just ended up liking going from elbow where I just drop his hand or his arm in the circle. He grabs my wrist. I tell him to post instead. Back to Schwab tie on this side. Snap Schwab tie. Maybe Schwab tie. <laughs> And the only reason this video doesn't have sound is because it was a uh, like an action cam that doesn't pick up sound very well. So that's why I'm talking over it right now. Just cut out some dead space there. It was just basically doing nothing. So I'm rolling. Yep. So I went wrist to Schwab, wrist to Schwab to wrist snap, Schwab tie, wrist snap, Schwab tie. And then back to just normal wrist control. Side change, waving at uh, I think Roper started videoing at this point or something. He came and sat down or something, and I, <laughs> that was me waving at him. So I'm just going straight swap tie, pull and circle it. Now this is how I work in an inside tie. So I throw his wrist out and up and slide my top hand, the hand on his elbow, up to his armpit. And just have the guy grab elbow control. So I'm going swap tie, pull, throw wrist out, head position, swap tie. And then he's posting my backside here. You can't really see it well. I think Roper's asking to see it again or something. He posts on my backside. I throw his wrist out and then wrist snap, thumb block at his elbow. Now Darren's wrestling ghosts again. They always just come up whenever I walk away. He just starts wrestling the ghosts. I don't know. Swap tie, throw it out, and when he, what am I have him do? I'm just controlling the position. So I'm keeping him, so I'm circling the same type of way as my swap tie. So my head kind of goes back there. I bring my elbows together. And I can hit an attack step or an inside step or an outside circle. I 
think I'm just trying to run through the progression in my head of wrist. He attacks my wrist. I switch to the wrist. He posts backside. I snap it down. Schwab tie. Throw inside tie up. And circle. Elbow, I wrist snap, yep. Wrist snap. Now I go back to the other side, he post. Do a few, now I throw it out to the inside time. Doing the same type of circle. I'm doing a little more pull here. And when I push, my hand kind of releases. All right, that's the next little movement. It gets it back down to a wrist. So I slide my inside tie past his arm and slide it to his elbow and elbow pass it off and slide my hand down to his wrist. I'm just running through the progression again, I guess. Yep, so here maybe, so slide my hand past, down his elbow, take my outside step, slide it down to a Schwab tie, and then he attacks my wrist, I can go back all the way back down the wrist. So I can go up and down this guy's one arm, or both arms, just starting at a wrist tie. So I go wrist, wrist elbow, inside tie, inside tie to wrist elbow to wrist which is an easy way to get a ton of reps that doesn't feel very boring because you're doing a lot of things. Speaking of boring, something that uh, Mark Schwab used to say was there's no such thing as boring drills, it's just bored people. Or maybe he said boring people. I would imagine he thinks a lot of people are boring, but I'm not going to speak for him. Because I enjoy being around that guy. He's very smart. And I hope he never thought I was boring, but... If he did, that's all right. But I think he used to say a lot, there's no such thing as boring drills, just bored people. <laughs> Jaren is wrestling the ghost again. I'm looking off into space. Swap tie, throw inside tie now. I'm starting to circle and move this guy. I'm trying to get Darren to post backside. This is where, so getting a guy to post on the backside with an inside tie feels a little weird unless you just give him heavy, heavy, heavy pressure. Which is what we figured out here, I think. In a minute, anyway. So, I got this inside tie, so I can slide it back down. And this is me just looking confused, trying to put my brain back together. So, he's talking, so Darren's like, that just doesn't feel right to post on the back side with your inside tie. Just, there's no reason for me to. And I was like, okay, well, you, give me, you put an inside tie and let me feel this. And I was like, yeah, that feels so bad. You could definitely see me say the word bad. I was like, that feels so bad. So I'm like, well, how am I going to do this? Because with a wrist snap, you can get to a lot of different places. So see, he's pulling his elbow in. Yeah, see, like he puts a lot of pressure down on that side, and it makes you want to post to try to square up. Which still, I mean, isn't the best reaction, but for a drill purpose, it's really good. So I put a lot of pressure and make him square up, and as soon as his hand comes, I wrist snap it off and go back to either wrist or Schwab or Schwab to inside tie on the other side. You see Darren just push that ghost away? What a monster. What a monster. He's fought like 37 ghosts this whole video. Or maybe just one really mean ghost. So I'm using my head pressure as I get him to, boom, to post backside. Elbow block. So I'm trying to tell him to fight inside. So as he fights inside, I beat him inside with my elbow. I go out of order in my progression here, but it's still, it's fine. Because collar tie and inside tie are fairly similar, except the way that I move a guy. Um... So here I have him thumb blocked, and as he fights inside, I bring my elbow like down toward my knee and elbow in, like way in. I'm like, like to cross the center of my body to get it back inside. I wonder if you guys can hear the thunder and rain. It's thundering and raining outside. <laughs> so once I get collar tie, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my backside hand because I really don't want both hands super high, like shoulders and up. Like if they're both with shoulders and up. I really don't want them high for drilling purposes. Some guys like them there um, 
in matches or when they wrestle live or whatever. But for drilling purposes, if you can get your hands in two different spots, like where's my camera, like high and low, in two different depths, Doug talks about it, high and low, and twisting the guy's body. So I'm, this so this is the so I have a collar tie and I'm doing the same inside tie hand slide past slide down his elbow to his wrist. My elbows really come together in that position, and I'm just working them all together right there. Which is what I mean. There's a whole it goes from. That was just a cut out of some blank space, but it goes from like low wrist, mid body to control tie. So this is oh this is where I realized I'm gonna have to order. So I'm gonna have Darren fight inside, and I'm gonna block with my elbow. That was just a bunch of space, and now I'm talking to. Oh, this is when Roper came up and did his video, and I'm talking about closing the gap here, which is also what I consider part of a hand fight. If you watch his video, I said that in and I'm pretty sure. Knee pound gap closer is one of my favorite. I used it a lot as a freshman because I had slow feet. I still don't have the fastest feet, but I had slow feet and knee pound gap close I could get in without getting my legs torn apart. So here, oh, this is where I talk about um, front headlock as a tie, because I kind of move them the same way. Like I can circle step and I can attack step and I can pull them down and push them. So front headlock is kind of a tie. Roper said he liked it, which is anytime he says he likes anything, I am good with it. This is where he asks what, like why I was moving the same ways as Schwab tie and inside tie. And I said, because I just want to move up and down his body from his wrist to hands up, hands low, hands middle, but also move my feet. And if you move them the same way, like it gives the guy less to think about um, as he's moving. So if he just is able to move his feet in the same circle while he works on his hands, and then once he works on his hands, he can move his feet the other way or split step or attack step or whatever else he wants to do. But I, that being said, I know I said work on his hands and his feet, but I think feet are more important regardless. Like feet are going to be more important in the way you move a guy. Hand fighting comes so much from your feet. It's just actually insane. So this is where I slid past to his elbow, pull back down to Schwab tie and wrist. And Roper said that it looked like you were just, that I was trying to cut the guy's body in half with all my drills, which it's good, it's perfect. Like That is a great concept and I love it. Now we're just talking. Doing oh, he just had me show it again. See, like my feet are moving kind of the same way where I'm inside and outside stepping. And so I go, yep, attack step. So right there you could see where I could I move the same way with a Schwab tie and an inside tie. And now we're talking about uh, setups. This is where, because I was like, like, do you, like, how many setups do you think they are? Do you really think there's only like four, three or four or whatever? And he's like, yeah, but they look different. It's like a pass, a post, a fake, and pass, post, fake. Holy moly, he's going to murder me. Let's see if we can find him. Hang on. Pass, a post, so like an elk, like a pass, like where you get an angle, like to a side, a pass, a post, where like you go underneath, like your angle's underneath the guy, um, a 
fake. Not like a hesitation where you get the guy's feet to freeze on your fake. And then pass the post. Okay, here we go. We got a pass. A drag. So drag is also, he considers a pass because it's like the same type of thing, just you're switching from your hand outside to inside. So it's like the same type of motion. A head snap. A snap. Head snap. That's what it was. It's like a quick head snap. Like get the guy to, to bounce or like freeze a little bit. So a pass, a post, a fake, and a snap. A quick snap, not a long snap. I think there's a big difference. Long snaps to pull a guy down. Quick snaps to get him to bounce like be jerky. I was telling Darren to remember all of them. And Roper told me not to steal them, so hopefully he doesn't mind this. <laughs> I'll ask him before I put this up, I guess. <laughs> um... You know, let's see. I know at some point we get into like the direction you circle and which way your feet should be, whether you can like actually inside step circle. And we really came to the conclusion that for now, if you're circling left, your left foot's probably 99% of the time should be in front. If you're circling right, your right should right foot should be in front 99% of the time. So I think he comes out and does it, unless I cut it out, I don't think I did. Yeah, so I'm talking about like an inside step trying to circle, and he says it's more of like an angle chase instead of like a movement. Because like that's how, that's me having an inside tie and trying to inside step circle, which just feels really weird. But it's a decent footwork, like that's outside foot forward with an inside tie on the same side, which felt way better. Even though I was wrestling that ghost that Darren was wrestling earlier, he came back. I think he shows me when he uses an inside step and it's like an angle chase. Yeah, so like he's like pass and he's like inside step because if you outside step that kind of angle, the guy has space to square up and circle. When you chase with an inside step there, it's harder for him to square up and circle. And now he's apologizing like he got in the way of <laughs> me doing something like no please interrupt every chance you get with your genius wrestling technique and like that man that man I'm making the thing I get into control ties a little bit here I just forget instantly what I read and then have to go back and read it again. No, thumb blocks. Three reactions from a thumb block. That's what I get into here. Three reactions when you thumb block a guy's elbow. When I, anytime I say thumb block, I normally mean it is elbow. Like that. So he does nothing. I slide to his wrist. He fights inside. I beat him inside to an inside tie. And then I snap the back side because I don't want both hands high. So, or I let him inside and do elbow control, which is something I need to work on because my elbow control is, it's okay. It's not the best. It's okay. So we come back. So I guess I'm starting from the beginning. I throw him out. Move, move, move. You have your snap. Thumb block this side now. He, does, he fights inside. I beat him inside with my elbow. An inside tie. And then I drop my backhand, or my other hand, not necessarily my backhand, my far hand from the screen. So to a wrist snap. And then I thumb block the other side, and I start to circle. Now he does nothing. I slide to his wrist, or he comes inside, and I go elbow. And I just talk about how elbow control feels strange to me, because I like being inside too much. There and wrestles for my elbow a decent amount. So I was asking him about it. So I told him. So he does nothing inside his wrist, he fights inside. I fight inside. 
or he fights inside. Elbow control. Trap my backhand. And then you could do it all on the other side. So you could either go back and forth, so one side you could him do nothing, go to his wrist, work it back up to an inside tie, but wrist snap the other side, thumb block, and then as he fights in on that side, you could do inside tie, wrist snap, and then thumb block, and then as he fights in, um, beat him inside, beat him inside on both sides, and then elbow control, and then elbow control on both sides. Yeah, this is where I talk about like getting up higher on the guy's arm for elbow control, like up toward his armpit where I can try and get his hand to float. I'm talking about how to push and pull a guy with a elbow control. This is some weird little thing I do where I just put my hand on the outside and push his elbow in when I'm outside to make him super uncomfortable. I try and like make his inside tie useless by just pushing his elbow up toward his head. See how his hand slips off? there and kind of feel it. Oh no, he's got a good, uh, see, he's got good elbow control. He's got my hand floating with an elbow control. That's what you want, ideally. Like, get this guy's hand floating with your elbow control. Backside wrist, like, what's this guy going to do? I don't know. I don't know. Get scored on, like that. Like, look. Fell on my face. I think, though, right there, the ghost was behind me, and he pushed me down. Like, there's a little bit of daring, but... Mostly the ghost pushing me in the back, and I fall down. And then the ghost comes after Darren, and Darren hand fights it to death and gets an underhook on it. And tells it to get out of here. And now I think I get in the control ties. And I just sneeze in my shirt like a disgusting human being. But you can tell the difference between a sneeze and sweat. Not me. Obviously not Darren. He don't care. Uh, this is when he fight. I fight inside to a collar tie now. And I move him. Kick him in his foot for whatever reason. So it's just like fighting inside and inside tie. So if you thumb block and the guy fights inside, you can fight inside the same way just to the collar. Uh, now we're talking about how the, the room got really sweaty and wet with our new mats and Luhan kept, whoever he was wrestling, kept kicking their feet and they would just slip and fall on their face. <laughs> uh, okay. I love watching that kid wrestle. So now I'm kind of getting the control ties. So like closer range, like underhook, uh, and Russian tie, and I think front headlock will be added in there. But so it's basically I get to my collar tie and I snap his head and dig a hook on the other side and drop and go to wrist or whatever control on the back side. <laughs> or slip out and go two on one. Like I'm just kind of messing around with ways to go from control to back to other stuff. This is something Cruz showed Darren. So you slide your neck out and go like kind of like a drag motion and swing to the other side and get a two on one. It's actually a really good drill. Like if you just go hook, you go You go underhook to two on one, and then back to hook. Or if the guy fights your elbow, you can go hook. So he goes back to that little drag. I think so good. I love that. So this little drag back to his two on one. This is a hook, hook pull down, or like a underhook snap to the front headlock. Now I'm trying to learn this little motion. Look like a straight up goob. Control his forearm, pulling this guy down. 
I was talking, this is, so I got stumbled upon a um, Satiev video where he was doing a camp or coaching or something. And he had a Russian and he pulled like in front of the guy and in a circle and down instead of like straight down or like, I don't know, it puts a lot of pressure on your shoulder. So I'm kind of messing around with if the guy fights in as he squares up from a two-on-one trying to get a front headlock. Really, any time a guy like squares up and runs his butt away, he can pretty much snap to a front headlock. This is when I kind of do a lot more thinking because the other stuff I kind of, that's like kind of where I wrestle is like inside tie, wrist and collar tie. But the control tie stuff, I'm, I understand a little bit, but I'm still like learning it, so. I think now I'm trying to discuss how I would go, or I'm trying to tell him how I want to go from closing the gap to wrist control, which is the bottom of his arms, all the way up. So like to Schwab, to inside tie, to all those ties like in that mid range, and then to a control tie, and then from control tie all the way back down his arm. So basically like at the end, like you would be able to do a transition through all of these positions having a place to go when the guy does just about anything and the stuff I haven't included here or think so from every tie I want to do a, a push a pull um, an angle which is really a pull or a push so an angle it's kind of included in those and a uh, push pull what was the last thing? Holy moly. A push pull angle clear and there was one more. I have to I'll look I'll look back at my nose. But um but a clear. So like clearing out all these ties so that both guys can work position. So like you could start with a wrist and swing to a swab tie and throw it to an inside tie. And the guy posts on the back side. Uh, am I talking to the ghost now? What am I what am I doing? Who am I looking at? Anyway, so it would be like I'm kind of controlling one side of this guy's body and I wrist snap him to a thumb block. He fights inside, maybe beats me inside. And then he wrist snaps my backside or wrist snaps the same side and then he goes into a hand fight and we're just transitioning through all these different positions with a fluid movement and a place that we can all that we can go and, and get to our and ultimately get to our tags because I'm still, so the definition of a hand fight is kind of slippery, at least for me, and right now I think I have it sort of defined as like moving through neutral wrestling in order to create an opportunity to score, because you don't necessarily have to take it, like you can hand fight if you're ahead to, to no score, like if I'm up 7-6, I can just hand fight and then never, like, never score I don't agree with that but like that's what it takes that's what it takes um because a hand fight doesn't necessarily have to be a score is my only point there um so moving through neutral position in order to get an opportunity to set up a score or set up a score or something like that I would love to hear your definitions of hand fighting because I'm still developing mine and I got a whole thing with words that gets super weird so good definitions big fan big fan of good definitions so i'd love to hear your definitions by hand fight and 
This is where I start talking about like clears where he can elbow past me. And then we just like continue to wrestle through these kind of positions here. And this is me karate chopping the air. I'm standing like a just what like I got some strange mannerisms, guys, but you know, that's how it goes. I don't even know how much is left in this video. Holy, only five minutes. I think I just pooped in my mouth and then swallowed it. Did you guys see that? Holy crap. Um, this is me talking about this motion. This this motion that I was doing is uh, like I want to try and loop through all the hand fight stuff, like from the bottom to the top. They just loop through it. And so like now he has hand control when he clears my wrist and then I'm able to go back and clear his. And I'm talking about another goofy little hand clear like that. Uh, and so really the purpose is just to become comfortable with moving through positions to get to where you wanna be. I'm staring at the camera because I think it might be dead or not recording anymore. Let's be cutting something out. Probably me going over checking the camera. So now we're back to underhooks. So he clears a hook. So yeah, so that that that's like a clear. So he clears the hook. And then I catch a two on one on his way out. So like a lot of guys do that like collar slide clear. I can just catch a two on one as he clears it down my down my collar. Or he can go into his like collar movement, like backside wrist snap and all those kind of things. So this is like when he like low clears. So he like tries to slide down my arm, I'm able to catch his wrist and I can go in all my wrist stuff. through discussing position discussing position my mouth just broke uh yeah and i still so i still i think i want to include over under and all this stuff because i think it's an overlooked position for most most places um and it kind of transitions out of that two-on-one to underhook stuff pretty well Plus, if you have a place to go in an over-under, whether it's clearing it right away to get back to your stuff or attacking it, like, I think that's a good idea. Because you're going to end up there probably once a match. At least. Or if you're Pat Downey all the time, if you can. I'm just kind of moving through positions here. I'm just kind of feeling what all this stuff can do. And this is me being tired. And week it's okay though hmm I really should invest in a camera that captures good audio so I can know what I'm talking about here instead of just looking at myself talking about who knows what I guess I'm just talking about oh uh, I think he was talking about like how I went about doing this and I was like I've just started writing stuff down and then organized it later in a document and that's so my phone's over there on the wall with well, this list of hand fight stuff in the, some sort of order and some still not in order because I didn't do all of it all right as we're winding down this video, um, if you liked it, let me know. Like, let me know what you want to see. You want to see more stuff like this. You want to see shorter stuff, longer stuff. Or if you have questions, ask them. Also, I want your hand fight definitions. Please, 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 please. I really want some help with that.
Thanks.